Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Antipsychotic Weight Gain, Does Leptin Play a Role? I would like to remind you all that we will be answering questions at the end of the presentation if we have time. So if you're attending through Zoom, you can ask in the chat box or the question and answer portion. And if you are joining us on Facebook Live, you can just leave a comment. Our presenter today is Dr. Frankie Teddy Ndomba. Dr. Frankie Teddy Ndomba is a Cameroonian medical doctor graduated from the Faculty of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences at the University of Yaoundé, Cameroon. After obtaining his medical degree, he followed an internship in internal medicine in the same faculty. He is currently pursuing a four-year internship program in psychiatry at the University of Bourgogne, France. As a passionate researcher, Dr. Ndomba contributed so far in more than 20 publications and made about 10 Congress presentations pertaining to internal medicine and psychiatry. He is also a re reviewer for numerous scientific journals. In the field of mental health, he has a particular interest regarding psychopharmacology, psychotraumatology, and psychosomatic medicine, especially interactions between psychiatric illnesses and treatments and cardiometabolic ones. It's in this wake that with colleagues, he recently published a narrative review article on the role of leptin in body weight gain induced by antipsychotic drugs. Thank you so much for joining us today and presenting your research. Thank you, Emily. I hope uh, you hear me well. And hello to everyone. It's a great honor and a real pleasure for me to be here today. And I first of all want to thank the International Bipolar Foundation members for this occasion they are giving to me to talk about this interesting and important topic. This webinar is at least partly linked to a review article we published with some colleagues and I could not uh, start my presentation. Uh, is it okay for my slide? Okay. And I could not start my presentations without saying some thanks for to them. So we have Dr. Tanke Orel of the University of Lausanne, Dr. Jean René Kate of the University of Yaoundé, Toshi of the same university. This presentation will be divided in six parts, and we will consecutively deal with the background on antipsychotic drugs and antipsychotic induced weight gain, an introduction on leptin metabolism, a part on leptin and mental health disorders, and the main section related to the weight gain induced by antipsychotic medication. So let's talk about antipsychotic drugs. The first antipsychotic drug, chlorpromazine, was accidentally discovered by a French chemist, Paul Carpentier, in the early 50s. Initially, these medications were dedicated to the treatment of psychotic disorders, mainly represented by schizophrenia, especially for the positive symptoms. However, due to some harmful neurological effects, it was necessary to think about another generation of antipsychotics. In the early 80s, we saw had the, the conception and development of second generation antipsychotics, also known as atypical antipsychotics. In this slide, uh, we listed some examples of typical and atypical antipsychotics. And we must say that with the advent of the second generation, antipsychotic indications were extended to other psychiatric illnesses, such as depressive and bipolar disorders. There are many differences between the first and the second generation of antipsychotics. But here we just mentioned two main types, the mechanism of therapeutic action and the adverse effect. Concerning the mechanism, typical antipsychotics act mainly by dopamine 2 receptors antagonism with high uh, potency uh, for uh, alloperidol or low potency for the others. This antagonism occurs in uh, mesolambic, mesocortical, negrostriatal, um, and infernibular pathways. Atypical antipsychotics also act on these receptors, but have many other targets such as serotonin, histamine, muscarinic, and glutamic acid receptors. Talking about the side effects, uh, typical antipsychotics induce more frequently extrapyramidal syndrome and tardive dyskinesia, while atypical ones are more frequently linked to cardiometabolic disturbances such as diabetes, 
dyslipidemia and weight gain. This especially for olanzapine and clozapine. Let's see some words on the weight gain induced by antipsychotics. A recently published meta-analysis reveals that antipsychotic drug is responsible of a body weight increase of at least 7% from baseline. This complication has important and detrimental consequences such as the raised risk of treatment discontinuation by patients and thereby of relapse and the increased cardiovascular risk. We must remember that cardiometabolic diseases greatly reduced life expectancy in patients with schizophrenia. The main hypothesis to explain antipsychotic induced weight gain is the imbalance between orexigenic and anorexigenic peptide expression through the stimulation of muscarinic, adrenergic, and some serotonin receptors and the inhibition of melanocortin, histamine, dopamine 2 receptors, and some serotonin receptors such as 5-HT2C. As other reported mechanisms, we have uh, the low energy expenditure uh, linked to the sedative effect of antipsychotic drugs, gut microbiome alterations, and some genetic mutations. Some genes have been associated with uh, antipsychotic induced weight gain. We have leptin and leptin receptor genes, even though for leptin genes, it, uh, there are quite some discrepancies. We also have serotonin 5-HT2C receptor genes. Uh, we also have uh, the CDA and the DGKB genes uh, reported as risk factors by a genome-wide associated study among Europeans and African Americans. These two genes have been previously implicated in diabetes and obesity. So let's talk about uh, uh, leptin and its metabolism. Around the early 50s was described the first leptin deficient mouse, a strain characterized by morbid obesity and decreased basal metabolism. Leptin is a cytokine-like peptide secreted by adipocyte cells in response to various stimulatory factors such as low energy expenditure and increased food intake. Leptin exerts an anorexigenic effect by acting on leptin receptors predominantly located in the hypothalamus and the cerebellum. Uh, in this slide, we try to illustrate how leptin works. So, after being secreted by adipose cells uh, due to various stimulatory factors, leptin enters the brain through the blood-brain barrier. After that, it binds to leptin receptors in order to penetrate target cells and activate signaling pathways. The activation of signaling pathways triggers cellular response characterized by the inhibition of some uh, molecules such as neuropeptide Y, ghrelin, and agutsi-related peptide and the stimulation of some molecules such as brain-derived uh, neurotropic, neurotropic factor and melanin concentrating hormone. All these mechanisms uh, aim to induce anorexic effect in response to uh, higher um, body weight. Uh, this slide aims to show uh, hypothalamic areas where leptin acts and where we have abundant leptin receptors. Leptin deficiency can easily lead to obesity, but obesity related to leptin metabolism can also be the result of an impaired leptin's action. In this slide, we show five potential mechanisms of leptin resistance, including alteration of leptin transport through blood-brain barrier, dysregulation of leptin signaling pathways, endoplasmic reticulum stress, neuroinflammation in hypothalamic areas containing leptin receptors, and mutations of the genes we mentioned earlier. Let's say uh, some words on the studies pertaining to leptin and mental health disorders. If we take the case of depressive disorders, uh, actually the relationship is unclear uh, due to some discrepant findings. 
Indeed, we have a, a studies reporting that leptin levels are lower in patients with depressive disorders. Uh, and one of the, of the explanatory mechanism is the impact of leptin on neurogenesis and the one of neurogenesis on uh, mood regulation. Nevertheless, some other studies have opposite findings with higher leptin concentrations among patients with depressive disorders and other research works reveal no significant association. Concerning bipolar disorder, uh, four years ago, a meta-analysis on more than 1,000 patients provides evidence that leptin levels are not modified in patients with bipolar disorders when compared to healthy controls. Talking about uh, psychotic disorders, uh, two recent meta-analyses concluded of an increase in leptin for schizophrenia patients compared to control with more marked elevation during relapse and with at least nine years of disease evolution. The relationship between um, leptin and psychotic disorders might be linked to its interaction with dopamine activity regulation. Indeed, uh, the high dopamine activity uh, that we, we see in uh, psychotic disorders could enhance leptin secretion in order to modulate this activity. And this is especially, especially in the, the case in the mesolimbic pathway. However, uh, Misiak and colleagues uh, found that in the early phase of psychotic disorders, there is a decrease in leptin levels. The same finding was uh, report by Lace and colleagues uh, two months ago. Let's now uh, go through the role of leptin in antipsychotic induced weight gain, which is the main section of our presentation. Uh, according to published uh, literature, most of studies tend to attribute serum leptin elevations in patients with atypical antipsychotics to weight gain rather than a direct effect of these drugs on leptin metabolism. The meta-analysis of Podvin and colleagues reported a positive and moderate size effect with a significant positive association between leptin and body mass index. According to their analysis, uh, olanzapine, clozapine, and ketchapine produced moderate leptin elevations. Meanwhile, aloperidol and risperidol were associated with small and or non-significant leptin changes. Uh, the, the more marked elevation with olanzapine and clozapine may be linked to their greater affinities for the muscarinic receptors. And in this context, uh, if uh, additionally to that we have uh, uh, some genetic polymorphisms, the weight gain, the body weight gain increase may be emphasized. May be emphasized. Uh, in this slide, we are trying to show explicative mechanisms that could support the place of leptin elevation as a consequence of antipsychotic medications. So, as uh, previously said, antipsychotic drugs, through many stimulatory and inhibitory actions, can lead to an imbalance between orexigenic and anorexigenic peptide. Uh, this could therefore induce weight gain. And as we said earlier also, body weight increase is a stimulatory factor associated with low energy expenditure uh, of leptin secretion by adipose cells. And this leptin is dedicated to exert some anorexic and anorexic effects. Uh, despite all these findings, we must say that some studies provide extremely interesting findings pertaining to the evolution of leptin amounts before weight gain occurs. Monteleon and colleagues found that uh, in the early phase uh, of clozapine treatment, there is uh, an elevation of leptin independently of the body mass index. Uh, the chart on the slide uh, resumes the reports of Sentici and colleagues who reviewed articles on leptin changes in patients treated by antipsychotic drugs. They found that just four hours after the treatment and storation, 
there is a significant increase of leptin levels when compared to baseline level. And this increase uh, reached a peak uh, uh, after six to 10 weeks um, after the uh, second generation antipsychotic and storation. This yearly elevation might be related to the yearly enhancement of uh, neuropeptide Y secretion by antipsychotics. And this uh, enhancement of neuropeptide Y secretion can be a stimulatory factor of uh, the secretion of leptin by uh, adipose cell signs, neuropeptide Y and leptin has opposite effects. After that, we may uh, wonder if antipsychotics, especially atypical ones, directly act on leptin metabolism or not. Uh, Tobai and colleagues found decreased mRNA expression of leptin after short and long-term exposure to clozapin with also decreased secretion of leptin by adipocytes. Uh, this finding of Tobai and colleagues uh, could be explained by the fact that the blockade of uh, serotonin 5-HT2C receptors by atypical antipsychotics reduce uh, leptin secretion and we know that leptin has uh, has been shown to endorse uh, central 5-HT turnover. Uh, on the other hand, Piao and collaborators uh, found that risperidone can impair some leptin signaling pathways and this will lead to resistance to leptin action and thereby the possibility of weight gain. So, uh, to buy, uh, Piao and collaborators demonstrate that with risperidone, there is uh, a mechanism of leptin resistance and thus the possibility of weight gain. Another reported mechanism by, by which uh, atypical antipsychotics can induce leptin resistance is hypothalamic inflammation. Since this drug can induce an up regulation of uh, pre inflammatory pathways, it can lead to hypothalamic inflammation and thus leptin resistance, which sustain the risk of weight gain. Actually, we don't know if uh, antipsychotics can induce some epigenetic changes on leptin metabolism actors, or including leptin genes, leptin receptors, and all the molecules and who act in the leptin uh, signaling pathways. So after saying that, uh, we, we can easily make some uh, conclusion. According to most of uh, published studies, leptin amounts are elevated in patients with psychotic disorders. Leptin is elevated in patients treated by antipsychotic drugs, mainly atypical one, uh, for example, clozapine and olanzapine. Leptin's rays can occur before weight gain as demonstrated by Sentici and colleagues and Monteleon and colleagues. And leptin rays occur uh, yearly after second generation antipsychotics. Um, and storation. But this leptin's elevation do not prevent the body weight increase. We must remember that the role, the main role of leptin is to have an anorexic effect in order to correct or to prevent body weight increase. But the leptin's elevations uh, uh, that we, we have uh, with uh, antipsychotic drugs, mainly second generation antipsychotic drugs, do not prevent the body weight increase after. And of these elements, we can uh, highlight the possible implication of leptin resistance mechanisms, including atypical antipsychotic epigenetic changes on leptin metabolism actors going from the genes the, uh, of leptin, the leptin receptor genes, and all the molecules uh, on the leptin signaling pathways. Thereby, uh, we, we, we trust that, we, we, we think that there is a need uh, 
to conduct uh, molecular and epigenetic studies pertaining to the influence of antipsychotic drugs on leptin metabolism before the weight gain. It's very important that studies uh, on this topic uh, act before the weight gain. So between the first two weeks, uh, after the first two weeks of the restoration of the antipsychotic drugs. These, uh, these kind of studies will have a great therapeutic implications because uh, we, from this kind of studies, we can have treatment targeting leptin metabolism for a patient with antipsychotic induced weight gain. Uh, I, um, examples of uh, these treatments are synthetic leptin receptor agonist, uh, leptin sensitizing molecules such as emeline, uh, inhibitors of signaling suppressors, because we must remember that uh, it has been demonstrated that risperidone can inhibit uh, the signaling pathways implicated uh, in leptin metabolism by the enhancement of suppressors. So inhibitors of signaling suppressors can be uh, of help in patients with antipsychotic induced weight gain. And the last class uh, we have the leptin blood brain barrier transport enhancer. So, uh, our review article uh, at the end suggests the, to researchers and to all people to conduct molecular and epigenetic studies on the influence of antipsychotic drugs on leptin metabolism. So, uh, after seeing this, I will show just some references uh, that help me. Uh, to make this presentation, and I will like to thank again the International Bipolar Foundation for this occasion. And if there is any question, do not hesitate. Emily, I am done with my presentation. Thank you. Thank you er, for presenting your research. It was very informative. Um, so yes, we'll open this up for questions. Again, if you're on Zoom, you can ask it in the chat box or the Q&A on Facebook, just leave a comment. So we do have a few questions to start off with. Um, one question is from Facebook and this individual is just trying to get um, kind of an understanding. So they asked um, if they took some form of leptin, could they lose weight that they put on while taking a long um, Zipine. Please, can you, can you just repeat the question slowly, please? Yes, of course. Um, so they are just trying to get an understanding um, that from all this that you presented, um, if you are saying if you took some form of leptin, would they lose the weight that they put on while taking Alonzapine? Uh, olanzapine has been demonstrated to induce weight gain uh, more than other antipsychotics and uh, the, the exact mechanism is uh, unknown actually but we think that if those, uh, those kind of patients with weight gain induced by antipsychotics take leptin, uh, leptin agonist, we can have benefits. It is not actually clear um, the effect of synthetic leptin receptor agonists on weight gain induced by medications such as olanzapine and clozapine, but we think that this can be necessary, but actually we don't have, I don't have uh, such studies demonstrating the impact of leptin synthetic uh, agonist on the weight gain induced by, by olanzapine. I don't have such studies. Okay, thank you for answering that question. Um, one of our Zoom viewers just was asking for the purpose of other, others listening that do not understand exactly what leptin is, could you please explain the meaning and what leptin does in the body? Uh, so this, it, it, is a, it is an important question. Uh, leptin is a peptide produced by adipocytes uh, in response to weight gain or to low energy expenditure. And simply, we must know that leptin is the more power, one of the more powerful regulator of food intake. If you have 
uh, low leptin levels of leptin metabolism alterations, we will have uh, we have a higher risk of obesity and such, and thereby of cardiovascular um, uh, diseases. So leptin is a regulator of food intake, and without leptin, we have a higher risk of obesity. Perfect. Thank you. This kind of also relates to that question. Um, one of our Zoom listeners was kind of suggesting a um, you know, possibility of if we imagine also that anti-inflammatory drugs could help in these patients, if that's a possibility, knowing that hypothalamic inflammation is one of the possible explaining mechanisms. Um, like an inflammation of your hypothalamus, if that's related as well. Uh, okay, I understand the question. It's true that it's had, it has been demonstrated that there is the possibility of neuroinflammation through in the hypothalamic areas, but uh, yet I don't have studies trying to, to um, investigate the effect of anti-inflammatory drugs on on uh, leptin metabolism or weight, weight gain induced by leptin metabolism alteration. We must know that the neuroinflammation uh, in the hypothalamic areas is just one of the mechanisms of leptin resistance, but actually there is no, there, there, is no, there are no studies uh, who try to investigate to address on the effects of anti-inflammatory uh, anti drugs on the weight gain induced by antipsychotic weight gain but it can be possible. Perfect. Um, and this is another kind of clarification question. What do you mean by the anorexic effect? Oh, the anorexic effect is, uh, it's just the, the effect by, by uh, leptin, when leptin acts, it induces the reduced weight, the reduce of body weight. and that's why I am talking about when I'm saying that leptin have an anorexic effect. It's just the effect by which leptin induced uh, or activate mechanisms in order to induce uh, reduce of weight of body weight. So it's just it's just that we can okay. we can call it anorexigenic effect or anorexic effect. But it's the same. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, we have another question. Um, how or is there a way to determine leptin levels in a person? Is it through blood testing or how, how do you guys can see the levels in someone? Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, leptin leptin uh, levels can be measured by some uh, immunological metabolic and uh, immunological assays. And uh, we we can measure leptin level by by this way in laboratory um, through through assays uh, such as immunological in samples in venous sem serum samples uh, stored at uh, at some degree. So in laboratory, it's possible to measure uh, leptin levels in this in this way. Perfect. And then um, another question is just from all of this information, do you have any suggestions in how to practice to manage or prevent this weight gain now prior to um, you know, gaining weight from antipsychotics? Or is there you know, nothing really that they can do while waiting for those studies that you suggested that will happen you know, potentially in the future? Uh, we, we must know that actually it's um, these findings are mainly experimental and for clinicians it's just important to include um, the weight gain the possibility of weight gain while they are treating patients with antipsychotic drugs because the, the weight gain increase the cardiovascular risk and cardiovascular events are one of the most common cause of death among schizophrenia patients so when clinicians in, uh, introduce uh, antipsychotics, they must keep in mind, they must bear in mind that there is a possibility of uh, a weight gain increase. But actually, the pathway of leptin is just experimental and we, we, don't, we cannot um, 
include that in clinical practice for the moment. It, it's just in, um, at the level of experimental studies at the moment, but every clinician introducing uh, NTEP psychotic drugs must keep in mind that it can be, uh, we can have uh, weight gain uh, and obesity, weight gain increase and obesity. Of course. And from this research, what are your next steps? Are you going to be conducting further research or are you using this research in your own practices or what are you gonna be, what's your next research going to look like? Really, really the next step is to try uh, with my, with the team uh, I belong to, is to try to conduct studies on uh, uh, aiming to see if anti psychotic drugs can induce uh, epigenetic changes on the all the actors on of uh, leptin metabolism uh, going to the the, the receptors uh, and sending pathways molecules so i think if we if this kind this kind of studies are, are done it will be very very helpful for research and we will know why patients on antipsychotic drugs uh, have uh, yearly uh, an increase in weight gain. So the next step is to conduct um, this kind of studies and maybe we will have uh, uh, in, uh, in the long term studies uh, aiming to see if there is an effect of uh, all the molecules uh, acting on metabolism of leptin in the weight gain induced by antipsychotic drugs. That's, that, that's the next steps. Perfect. I think so far that that is all of the questions that we've received. Um, if we yeah. have any other additional questions that um, come to your mind, those who are watching, you can email me at info at ibpf.org and I will you know, try and forward those along or answer them. Um, as well actually we got um yeah so that's all the questions that have come in so thank you so much and thank you again dr Indoba, for such an informative lecture this webinar recording will be available on our website and our youtube channel i invite you all to visit www.ibpf.org to learn more about our upcoming webinars and to stay connected via our monthly e-newsletter where this webinar will be featured. Um, so we thank you all for attending and we wish you a wonderful week. Thank you, Emily. Thank you to the International Bipolar Foundation. Of course. Bye, you guys.